You're beautiful. I love you. Look at that baby. Look at that beautiful lady. Come on, boy. Come on now. How old are you? 92? Get up. What a view. Look how high up it goes. Okay, we're heading out to the to the wood again, 200 acre wood, and we're gonna try to get us another load if we can. And uh, put uh, the axe I got from Gary to use the single bit, the splitter. So uh, we're gonna get a load uh, loaded up. That's our plan. And uh, if I if I, if I got time and everything, I may end up uh, putting that double bit to use too. And felling a tree with it today, because I'd really like to see how it does with felling a tree. To be honest with you, and I believe it's gonna do really good. But and I haven't done one for a little while either with the axe. So. Look at that. Amish made houses. Look at that. There's the house on the wheels. Back to the 200 acre woods here. Now, I kept saying it a little early in my other videos that you could see the tops of these hills, but now you can actually see the tops of these hills. Now you really can. Uh, my, uh, the guy up here that I, that I get the wood from, he was talking about his neighbor up here had a pond dug and uh just since last year i believe and said he didn't even realize it was there until all the leaves fell so i guess this guy that i'm getting the wood from here he had his land logged out and uh i guess they ended up getting quite a bit of money from it too and so his neighbor had his logged out and i think with the month some of the money he got he dug that pond there or had it dug or whatever but yeah, I, I, this is the third year I've been getting wood from here and I've never seen that before. So I guess he had him a pond dug. I know it's, it's gone all over the place. And you can probably barely see that, but. But if I have to put it in full drive, then I have to put it in full drive. Because I feel like I'm going to make it up this hill. It's wet. See, we're spinning already. Yeah. I have to put it in full drive. Yep. Okay, good. My goodness, hit me right in the head. Very sharp. Just like cutting down little trees, isn't it? Uh huh. Those branches are like little trees, aren't they? It takes out chunks. Big chunks.
very sharp. Hey, Dad, someone messaged you. Did they? Yeah. Uh, I know it's been a little bit since I've put a firewood adventure video. Since Thanksgiving, I've had a lot going on, really. I helped a friend move, and uh, then Thanksgiving, and then some other things as well, so... But uh, definitely glad to be able to make another video. And I don't always get footage either of what I do. Sometimes I do things without uh, really taking the time to get the footage. Um, but uh, this oak is up on top of a hill out there in the 200 acre wood, what I call a 200 acre wood. And uh, it's a big white oak. And uh, it's, a, it's such stringy stuff. And I finally uh, put, I'd already used Gary's axes I just didn't get a whole lot of footage of it, but uh, here you'll be able to see me hand splitting with the single bit that he gave me, and I really like it. It's got a 32 inch handle, I think a five pound head on it. It is a good splitter for sure. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, we were out here for not too long. This was today actually, so it didn't take us too long to do this, and we delivered this load after. The only thing I regret is I meant to do this after um, we ended up getting a full truck truckload like we normally do, and I, I intended to uh, record that and uh, show that and everything, but uh, I ended up not even uh, recording it once it was full. So some of the splitting on here, you'll see us fill it up over, you know, a regular truck bed and even a little more, but uh, I don't have the footage of me filling it up the rest of the way. I was kind of in a hurry, to be honest, to try to get this to this man and uh, didn't end up recording the, the last of it. Okay, so we cut a little bit on this one here. Still some more to cut. And then I got some of that over there cut. Got my truck up in here as close as I could. What we're gonna do now is try to get the wood. It's kind of going downhill, so see there, kind of just try to roll it to the truck. like that and then once I get them over there I'll get them all stood up and uh, go ahead and start splitting but, uh, Gary's axe to use I've already used both of them some I just haven't really got a lot of footage of it yet but uh what'd you say Cor what'd you say that one's gonna be hard to row because it's got a big knot on it yeah, I know. Don't, don't want it going that way <laughs> We don't want it going down that hill. That's a big one and it's way out of the way. Don't want it going that way. That's one thing about working on these hills. All right, but we'll go ahead and get this stuff stood up and split. I'm guessing this little bit here, I'll probably make around a truckload. And uh, then we'll go from there. So there that is. I'm gonna split this load with. I think it will do a fine job. Look at the edge on that axe. Oh, that sharpened axe, doesn't he? Yeah, I've got it a little bit dirty already. Oh, that sharpened axe. Oh, I think five pound head. So it's actually a little heavier than the Fiskers. Handle feels great. Right. Hope that everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, me and my family had a very blessed Thanksgiving. My mother came down, my mom, I call her, and my little brother, and uh, that was about it, really. And then it was just me and my wife and children. And uh, but we were very, we were very happy to see them. My brother, he works in Lexington, so I don't get to see him very often. And uh, that was, I think that was actually the first time I've seen him in almost a year. So since he's moved there, I've not seen him a whole lot. 
Actually, I take that back. I've seen him a few times here and there, but not for very long periods of time in within that year. But it was the first time he had been over here, I think, within around a year because uh, it was the first time he seen my little, my smallest girl, Nevaeh, and uh, she'll be a year in January. So that just shows how long he it had been since I got to see him. It was very good too. Again, it was really good to get to see my mom and nephew as well, my little brother's uh, little boy. Yeah, but we just had a, a good time to get getting to see one another. We're all pretty close. We just don't get to see each other very often. Um, hopefully for Christmas, he'll come down again as well. You know, sometimes, too, you realize when you're doing this type of work right here just how important it is. Uh, some some people it's not too important to at all the wood they don't they don't even need it they're just uh, getting it because they uh, lo there's one man I sold to in Lexington and he said the only reason he got it uh, was because his wife enjoyed to see the fire and there's nothing wrong with that at all um, but there's some people too that I deliver to and it, uh, this is their only source of heat uh, one example of that I, I recently delivered to a couple and I think they were in their 60s and uh i think i did a video on it i just didn't show the delivery it was uh in uh west liberty but i got a call from a florida number and i usually don't answer out-of-state numbers just because uh, i get scammers calling me all the time trying to uh tell me they'll get me more business if i buy this package or that package so uh, i really i usually don't answer them if i do and i see it's a scammer i just hang up now um but I thought to myself, well, it could be somebody for wood, wood because I have had people call out of state for wood and for landscaping. So I answered it, and sure enough, it was. And uh, the man uh, was buying wood for his sister and his sister's husband. And so uh, I told, he was wanting a truckload, and I told him, you know, I don't really do truckloads much anymore just because they're not too profitable. I said, but I deliver it by, you know, a two-face cords, which is about two truckloads. And uh, he said, well, that's fine. That sounds good. And uh, asked me the price and everything. And we agreed on a price and went for me to deliver. And uh, so I, I, I delivered there and got there and a man came outside. And sometimes people will come outside and watch you or sometimes they'll help you. And sometimes they'll just stay inside until you're done stacking it and pay you. But uh, this particular delivery here, uh, the man came outside and we ended up talking for a while. And uh, I come to find out that he had uh, he had no uh, they had no electric. I think the only electric they had was uh, I think maybe their garage had electric, and they were running a, uh, an extension cord from the garage to their home. But something had happened in their home, maybe a fire or something that had uh, made their electric to where they couldn't use it. The, the wiring. And so he was telling me that their only source of heat, I think, was the wood. And I think he said they also used kerosene at one time. But he was talking about how at kerosene it got so much more expensive, so it was hard for them to afford that. And so he was saying he was very thankful, you know, that his uh, wife's brother had, had bought that for him. Or something of that nature. And uh, just how much it helped and everything. And we talked for quite a while about it and everything. I ended up telling him about the YouTube channel and stuff. And he said that him and his wife both were going to subscribe. So that's pretty neat sometimes too when I'm out uh, doing these deliveries and talking to people. You, you, you have a lot of interesting conversations. And you, sometimes it leads to other things. Like uh, I have a firewood customer, a couple of them who I got a very nice swing set from for free. A cedar swing set firewood customer i got a 10 by 22 foot shed for free from and uh before that i was paying i think over 200 a month on a little 10 by 16 shed and once i got that shed from him i i called them to come pick it up so you and then my truck my dodge truck i got that from a firewood customer who worked a deal out with me a deal who most people would not do with somebody that they didn't know and for some whatever reason he told me he trusted me and uh but it it, it I'm just very thankful for all the things that I've been blessed with while I've do, been doing firewood and landscaping and lawn care. I'm excited as well to uh, show you all that uh, new property that I've gained access to 
the property where uh, Kentucky Bluegrass was named Kentucky Bluegrass, which I think is extremely interesting to me. And another thing, too, there will be some sycamore out there. I've seen it, uh, sycamore and locust. So there will be a couple new woods that I haven't really uh, shown much on the channel. Both of which I'm pretty familiar with. Locust, I sowed a lot of that my first year. Sycamore, I'm not, I haven't sowed a whole lot of that, but I have done loads of it. And uh, it just hard to forget that stuff once you split some of it, especially when it's green. And be honest, hickory is pretty rough too. Those are probably my top three. Hickory is probably maybe number three for me. Locust splits pretty easy, to be honest. It splits easier than this white oak does, for sure. And then red oak splits easily. Cherry splits easy. Uh, and that's mainly the hardwoods I deal with around here, honestly, is those. But uh, looks like here I'm talking about the profile of that axe. It is a good splitting axe, that's for sure. I really enjoy that axe. This white oak is some tough stuff, though. It is. It's just so so stringy and, and so hard, so dense. Uh, but that's mainly what you see me do is this. I think I've looked into that before as far as like the price of white oak logs. Um, and they are, uh, around here, I think, one of the more expensive ones, you know, if you're logging. One of the ones you're wanting to get, and that's probably why I'm, they, they got, there are so many white oaks down there. More than anything else, there's white oaks. I would say probably 60% white oaks. And, you know, and then you've got uh, red oaks and a little bit of poplar, walnut, uh, hickory. So those are probably the main uh, types of wood that uh, I come across here on this property. Look at that axe. Gary really knows what he's doing when it comes to sharpening an axe. I think he said he used 15 grades of sandpaper to get to that edge. It's like a mirror when you look at the edge of that axe. I think what I'm saying there is how white oak is real stringy and stuff like that. But as I said, I'm excited to show that new property. I've not even went out there and got any wood yet. I've just went out there and took a, take a, uh, took a look at it. Uh, the guy had one of those, uh, I think you call him a gator or something. He it seems like he definitely has money, the man. Which to me ain't a big deal. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't respect men because of how much money they got. That, that doesn't do it for me at all. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, uh, talk negative at all by, by nothing. I'm just making that clear. I, just because I said he has money, that don't mean I think nothing of it really. But he was a very friendly man, and, uh. He liked to cuss a lot more than I like to hear, especially with Carter out there. I don't like that. He, he definitely can like to cuss a lot. Um, I think he was maybe in his 60s. He was a guy that I said was a Bronze Star veteran and told me some interesting stories. But uh, his property, I just thought, I think that's so interesting how that that's where Bluegrass was named. Bluegrass was on his property. There's even a church right down the road from him that has this thing outside there and that says uh, right on it, uh, bluegrass was discovered so many yards from that uh, church. And I think it said so many yards northeast, which fell on that man's property, according to him. I thought about that the other day. I fell trees for fun with an ax. And you know, that's not the way to make money quick. So I guess it's not much different than a guy wanting to go through or not if he does want to. What I do is that. If you try to go through that, it's different. See that? That's why I don't try to go through them, me personally. As I was saying earlier, though, it, it makes you realize sometimes when you do some of these deliveries how important the wood is to people. And uh, there's been quite a few of them to where I, where I feel like that was their main source of heat or some people who maybe it was their only source of heat, so... 
it makes it that much more rewarding to do. I'm very thankful for it. I love firewood so very much and uh, plan to do it for many, many years to come. And uh, in the future, I'm not saying I won't have uh, some heavier equipment. I do plan to get me a front loader tractor. And uh, there's, I've got a lot of things in mind, but I always plan to hand split. That's for sure. I just really enjoy hand splitting. You've probably seen it at the beginning, the splitter that I had. And uh, it's definitely not a, not a fast splitter. It's just one of your, I guess you'd call it a box, box store uh, splitters came from Lowe's and it had a great engine on it, Honda engine. I think it would start up around the first pool. And I bought it from a man who lives back behind me and he had it covered up and uh, it looked almost new to be honest with you when I got it from him. And I only had it for about a week. And uh, I got a pretty good price on it too from him. Um, but it had a Honda engine, a 27, 27 ton. And uh, it was just very slow to be honest with you, very slow. I know some of the commercial ones, if you get them, they're very fast and have some of them four-way and six-way and even more wedges, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely can see uh, why guys would enjoy those. And I'm not saying I wouldn't as well, but I, I, I still enjoy hand splitting. Um, but, yeah, that was the splitter that I had for, for about a week. I mean, the first day I used it, I knew I, I, didn't, I didn't care for them. Not at all trying to talk about other people as splitters because that's just my that that is my preference. You know, that's all that is is preference. That's what that comes down to is what you prefer and what you don't. And me personally, I just I prefer to do it by hand. I really enjoy hand splitting. I believe I always will. Uh, I'm excited about going to the Daniel Boone National Forest too eventually. The only reason I haven't really done that yet is just because uh, most of the those forests are a little bit farther away from me. And what I'm trying to do is go to the, as close as I can, you know, the distance that's closest to me to get the wood so that I can make the most profit. Because with gas prices the way they are right now, if you're having to drive that far just to get the wood, you know, by the time you pay your gas and everything, you may not be making a whole lot of profit. So I'm trying to do it the smartest way that I can. Really, that's the last resort for me is the Daniel Boone National Forest. Because I right now I have three places that are all pretty close to me. And there's a fourth, too, that I haven't uh, went and met with the man yet. And uh, But he was telling me he had 50 acres that was logged out. And, and that's what I like, too, is logged out land. This new one, new guy that I met where the sycamores are and uh, where Kentucky bluegrass was discovered, it's not logged out land. I think he just maybe removed some of the trees himself or, they, or cut them down or whatever. Or maybe they was already down when he bought the farm because he's not been there very long. It's a farm is what it is. And uh, the very farm where Kentucky bluegrass was named bluegrass. So, but uh, it had trees down. Uh, we got on his gator, I think you call it, and, and rode around. And uh, he he showed me, you know, the different places where where the wood was. I think he has around twenty five acres, or something of that nature. Not not a, a whole lot of desirable stuff there, to be honest with you, compared to what I, what I'm getting, you know, at this land here. And this land here is definitely my best resource right here because it's mainly oak. The other land where you've seen me get the cherry from, the, most of the good stuff there is cherry. In the back back there where I, ha I haven't shown you yet, there's a bunch of uh, what looked to be a maple back there. And so that's, you know, some decent firewood as well. And then uh, there's some cedar that I plan to use for some post. And then... Uh, she told me as well that they were supposed to be taking a lot more trees down and that uh, I was welcome to them. So no shortage of wood right now. But right here at the 200 acre woods, there's just so much good oak. You know, it's been down for quite a while and it's already down and it's good hardwood. You know, it just and there's so much of it, too. I mean, just think a stretch across 200 acres of stuff like this right here behind me. This what that would be is a top is what they call them. You know, they take the real expensive logs and sell them and. And I, I tried that once, to be honest with you. And my goodness, it didn't work out for me. I had a 5x10 trailer at the time and no winch or nothing on it. But I, I'd cut down an oak for somebody. It was a big white oak, big oak. And cut it into logs. I think I just had three of them by the time I got them cut up because I tried to keep them pretty long. And uh, me and him muscled them things up on that trailer. And let me tell you one thing, that was hard. 
I mean, if you had a winch or something, I could see it happening, but it was not worth the trouble by any means. So after hours, I think, hours, probably a couple hours at least, of getting those, finally getting those things loaded up and then driving about maybe 45 minutes away or so, I get to this place that, you know, they buy logs or whatever from you. And I, at first time I'd ever done it, my cousin was the one who told me about it, and he did pretty good with it. And I'm not sure if it was my or it was my first time doing it and they just took advantage of me or if the logs just weren't very good logs. But after doing all that work, I think I left there with maybe uh, 50 some dollars or something like that. Not good at all, whatever it was. It, it was, I mean, just the gas alone, it wasn't, I didn't really make much profit at all. And that, the same amount of wood, if I would have split that in the firewood, I could have probably got a full load out of it, $200 load, so... I haven't messed with them since. <laughs> but I have a cousin who told me he got, I think, around $500 out of one walnut log, which walnut is very expensive stuff, black walnut around here. Probably, as far as I know, it's probably one of the most expensive logs there is around here that I know of. But uh, he said that out of one walnut log, he got $500. And they use it for veneer or something it's called. And uh, they've got to be really straight logs, though, with no knots in them to be considered that level, if I'm not mistaken. The, what I read on the paper that they gave me, it's kind of the same concept of going to a scrapyard. You know, they give you a receipt and tell you, you know, what kind of scrap you had, you know, whether it's shred or, or whatever, copper. And then they tell you the price on it. And I think it was kind of the same way there at that logging place. They uh, gave me a piece of paper, and I think it, the logs that I had, they were considered like pallet logs or something so they must not have been very good or something and uh it wasn't worth it i'll tell you that much and now i know if you get a good load of them I, it's very worth it i've heard of people making a lot of money off of logs if they're good ones but i think it still comes down to what which you know i don't know what you even call those places logging yard maybe what place you take the logs to you know to determine what kind of price you get I'm not against doing it in the future, but when I do it in the future, I plan to have me a winch or something to get those big logs up on there because they're not worth muslin on there, that's for sure. You get one of those oaks that's 10 feet or 12 feet, and you're talking 1,000 pounds plus probably. And uh, yeah, men, there's just too much weight for men to be moving, especially just a couple men. I had one guy helping me, but still, it was, it was not worth it. I'll tell you that much. It's beautiful out here in this forest though but as you can see now you can you can really see through the trees now there's a big dead poplar there close to us uh too and i, I want to maybe fell that one with my axe and then there's a locust a huge locust uh to the right of us here and it's completely dead it has a lot of good wood in it looks like but it's kind of dangerous it kind of at the bottom it splits and i was wanting to fell it with an axe but uh it's right on a hill too so i would be standing on a hill kind of it just seems it's it's definitely dangerous, you know. Okay. Got about up to around a truck bed left or so. I've got these rounds here and I'm hoping that'll be enough to fill it up the rest of the way. Should be close anyway. After I can cut up some more. I did all of that with the axe I got from Gary and it is a good splitter. Pretty cold out here today. Kind of overcast and gloomy. We got a lot of rain yesterday, so we were looking at some trees earlier too that we could use a double bit to fell. And there's quite a few around here. Big locust that I may try to get sometime. I sure do appreciate everybody that's uh, subscribing and watching. All the positive feedback as well. And uh, with more subscribers and more views comes uh, different sorts of feedback. So I get some negative feedback as well sometimes. But that's okay. I mean, I won't say it's okay. It's it's never okay to be negative with people. But what I mean by that is uh, I'm okay regardless, you know. I'm going to keep on keeping on. <laughs> I don't let men bring me down like that. Or at least I try not to. Of course, things get to you sometimes. But I don't let... Uh, I've said it before. When people say things of that nature to me, negative things. And I don't know what I'm doing or I'm dangerous. or uh, It just sets a fire under me, really. I don't mean sets me on fire either as it makes me angry. Just what I mean by fire under me is it motivates me. I like to prove uh, the gainsayers wrong. But I sure do appreciate each and every one of you that's watching. All those that have subscribed, we're up to over 500 now. And the channel's been growing pretty quick here lately. And I, I sure am thankful for it.
I appreciate each and every one of you. All the positivity, all the people that take their time to watch and comment. I'm very grateful for each and every one of your time. And uh, Christmas is coming up here soon. Hope you had a blessed Thanksgiving and hope each and every one of us has a, a blessed uh, Christmas as well. Yeah. Go Camden. Good job.